Yes, we are live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to BNB Live, a sustainable fair trade network. It is so awesome to have you here. If you are, it's good evening here. If you're watching somewhere else, it's maybe good morning. If you're watching after the fact, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. You may notice me thinking, where's the studio? This is my home studio because as our guest, Robin, who I'll introduce in a moment with and I were talking about, and if you've seen me post on social media, my back has been very unhappy for the last two weeks. And the fact that I'm, I didn't want to drive over there and attempt to set all that stuff up. I'm doing good to sit in the chair in my home studio. Thankfully, I have a little studio here. And Vanessa had some other things to do, so she won't be joining us tonight. And I wanted to still come on and be able to do this. I'm grateful that it's getting better, but uh, like, well, I'll introduce Robin of Beautyology. She is our mm -hmm. guest tonight. Welcome, Robin. Thank you so much for having me. This is a wonderful opportunity. So uh, honored to be here with you. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to hear that you're not feeling so great. But um, we were just talking, like commiserating with all of our issues, which is fabulous. So me and my bum knee and you and your back and... Uh, yeah, and you were yeah, sharing that so you have, have a friend that has a, <laughs> I have back, a friend issue. That has a back issue. Yeah, join the and club. I have <laughs> other friends I've heard who've had problems. It seems to be the season for that, unfortunately. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I just I, I had this op um, this PRP injection last week, so I am waiting to see if it does anything. So. It's been exactly one week and you never know. So Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm having yeah. an infection next week. And it, I, yeah. it's tough for me. <laughs> I, I shared a little bit this, uh, on a post on Facebook. Some of this is my own doing because I haven't been eating. And I know that the foods that cause inflammation in my body and I've been eating a lot of those lately. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, you know, it's. I feel like I'm, I don't know, like you, you, we, we become like our parents, you know, like when we we're younger, we're like, we're never going to do that, you know? And now it's just like, this is happening. My, um, you know, my mom too has issues and stuff. And so she'd always talk about the foods have to be, you know, a certain way. She doesn't want me to cook certain things um, for inflammatory reasons. And I never really paid much attention to that specifically. You know, I always pretty eat pretty well and, and try to be mindful of what I eat. But now I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if what I just shoved in my mouth is inflammatory. Like, is it going to hurt my back now? <laughs> so, um, well, for me, it's uh, obviously anything with sugar, but then things yeah. like rice and potatoes, those, those. All the yummy stuff. Yeah. Um, and you know. and I w I've been eating too much of that. So I, I'm back on the extreme discipline like I, I was at an event earlier and they had lunch and there was all there was vegetables and chicken and salad and rice. And I skipped the rice because I thought, hmm, no, I, I've gone to a point where it hurts so bad that I need to do something to reverse it. Yeah. And uh, and I'm I'm working on that. But it's yeah. some of it's my own fault. Some of it's a chronic injury from the military and. It's important to take care of ourselves because pain is a great equalizer. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's important for everyone to take care of themselves physically, mentally, spiritually, all of that. So, and as we get older, we just realize how more how important that truly is on all aspects. So, right. yeah. I mean, I think think what you're doing and going uh, to, you know, Africa soon is going to really speak to your spiritual side for sure. So definitely. It's definitely. That's yeah. a, it's God's calling on my life. So I, uh, and you know, from a spiritual perspective, I think that there's some attacks going on attempting to make it harder for me to go. So I fight you're those just, prayers yeah. and it's like, okay, you can just leave me alone. I'm still going. So wow. um, for as long as I met, I met you uh, less than it was a year and a half ago, but I, I know for a fact, just by knowing who the type of woman that you are, that you're not going to hold at anything. I'll do back that you're going to be there uh, with your women in Kenya and you're going to have an amazing time and you're going to feel great. You have to do what you got to do now. Yeah, I'm excited about that right now. Layla, our director in Kenya, is in Katali. She's been visiting with the ladies, and I know she's waiting on me to send the order. Layla, if you're listening, the order is coming. She knows I've been I've been hurting, but the, it's great that a lot of the products are selling out, so the ladies are going to be very busy. 
But then she is moving on to Mount Elgon to check out the farm because the mm -hmm. harvest of the first round of crops, the cabbage, is happening mm -hmm. this week. So it's exciting. Oh, that's what you told me about that. That is exciting. Fantastic. What are you going to be doing with that? Se selling it to stores. We are hoping that somebody comes and buys the whole crop. And obviously some of our ladies, the ladies there that are harvesting it, mm -hmm. the ladies in Kipsongo that we work with, with the, the products, the beads, by the way, I love mm -hmm. your necklace. Yes. Special. I'm just wearing it special for you. Yes. Best. <laughs> Yes, but it's also my favorite favorite color so represent yes and uh, so they, they it'll help them but then also reselling so we can reinvest and grow some more things we're growing onions right now so mm. part of the fundraiser that we're doing is uh for uh for the farm to to mm -hmm. continue to do the farming and to build that and have it grow it's run through our our ngo over there and mm -hmm. I, I'm excited just to see where that goes because uh, food shortage is a big problem in Kenya. Well, it sounds like you've uh, are on your way. It sounds really exciting. So I'm, that sounds amazing. So what else? I mean, you've got cabbage and onions. I mean, you, how's the, the, the soil there? Is it good for a bunch of different right. types of vegetables? So. Oh my gosh. The, the, the food there obviously because it's not GMO'd or, or mm -hmm. picked too soon. It's so, you can go in the market and get tomatoes and mangoes and oranges and bananas and any kind of vegetable, fruit, anything. And it, it oh the God. flavor yeah. is so good. It sounds good. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> <laughs> I actually mm, make yeah. salsa there. So I make salsa mm. homemade. And I have to really search for good tomatoes to make sure that the flavor comes through. But I got tomatoes there and made mm -hmm. salsa, and it was so flavorful. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the tomatoes yeah. here are grown in mm -hmm. kind of hot houses or whatever, and the, the flavor grows. You've got to be really careful. Yeah, I honestly, I feel like it's, you never know what you're going to get. Half the time it tastes like styrofoam. Right. Yeah. But if you get those, those uh, heirloom tomatoes, mm -hmm. I throw some of those in and then there's a farmer's market that sets up not too far from me and then there's a, a store that also gets things that they grow so mm -hmm. if I have to if I make salsa I go and get those type of things otherwise the yeah like you said styrofoam mm -hmm. or paper not good <laughs> well awesome let's talk about some fair trade yes I'm so excited um I, yeah, I mean, this has been an amazing journey since I joined, Fair, you know, I don't know, for your guests, they may not, you know, obviously know who I am yet, but, um, or how we even met, but we met, right, with um, Fair Trade LA, uh, the nonprofit organization right. that I joined about, uh, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, Um uh, and I'm, you know, born and raised from Los Angeles. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, so I guess you could say I'm a um, original Valley girl. Um, <laughs> I went to the Galleria when I was a teenager. Uh, really, yeah. So um, the movie Valley Girl, like that was my life. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, you know, I've always uh, lived here. I went to school in Orange County, um, studied abroad uh, in uh, the south of France, and just came back here. Um, but I'd always been and I worked, my, so my background really has been in the beauty industry. Um, started off in editorial. So I uh, worked in all kinds of mag, you know, magazines, newspapers, radio stations. Um, I kind of did a little bit of everything when I was first starting out. And I kind of fell into the beauty industry by being a beauty editor at a teen magazine. So that's kind of how my beauty journey started. Um, I knew obviously what beauty was because, uh, you know, who doesn't know? So did you cover? Did you cut? What what kind of beauty did you cover? Did you cover fashion or cosmetics or? Um, I covered, you know, a lot of all the products that were coming in that were being launched, the new products. Um, and because at the time um, when I first started, I was focusing for teen 
a teen magazine. So it was really like focusing on products that teen girls would like. But the magazine had a slant about empowerment and which was great. Even back then, it was kind of ahead of its time. Um, we're talking, you know, 20, I don't even know how to tell you how old, I don't know. I was like 27 years ago, a long time ago. Um, but um, so, yeah, I was interviewing a lot of formulators, a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, and so that's kind of, and I was, you know, writing like an RX column. So I really kind of did a deep dive into like the beauty industry and also like, you know, how it affects your skin and, you know, but back then it was just all about, you know, like how it makes you look good and, It'll, you know, as far as like what was in the products, wasn't really even anything that anyone talked about back then, you know. Um, but um, over time, I uh, ended up freelancing for a bunch of magazines, a lot of beauty. Then I ended up, be, you know, just kind of realizing I had this entrepreneurial uh, uh, spirit, I guess, latent inside of me. And I decided to start a hair accessories company and didn't know, have any background in business or anything like that. I just liked uh the, I just thought this creativity just came out of me. I had an idea. So I just started sewing and creating uh, these products with fabrics um, and created a website. And um, just knowing the world of uh, magazines um, and how publicists uh, reach out to editors, I just started doing that myself. And um, I started a business. And again, like I said, I had no business background. And back then, you know, you could get your stuff on Amazon and it would sell and you didn't have to pay, you know, all the crazy fees to get it, um, you know, with the marketing and everything that there is now. And so um, I kind of got, you know, I don't know if it was luck or it was just, you know, a mix of different I'm things. Fine. But it, yeah. So anyways, I, you know, so I started kind of doing business uh, stuff that way. I was still writing, doing a lot of entertainment features at that time. I was interviewing celebrities and I would wear my hair accessories and they would say, oh, I like your headband. And I said, oh, I made it. I'll send you one. And so that, you know, that happened actually with Beyonce and um, that was pretty insane. So, um, you know, was able to like tell the editors at, you know, big magazines and then they wrote about it and it was and they sold like crazy. And so, you know, that doesn't really happen anymore today. <laughs> but to make a long story short, I kind of um, fell into PR just because I knew how that worked. I had uh, started having my kids. I wanted to work and be creative, but I still wanted to do something where I was able to like take care of them at home. And so I uh, was asked by a friend of mine who had a vegan uh, accessories brand at the time, if I would help her with PR. And I never really thought in a million years that I would do PR uh, as a career, but I thought I mean, mine is why not? I guess I'll try. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Like you're and going this way and this way and this way. And I don't know. Like this journey, this man, I was just like going on. I'm like, okay, I'll try it. So anyway, um, I started pitching her products. I got it in L magazine, and then I'm like, this is kind of fun. You know, it was um, it was cool, and was still doing the creative part of what I love to do and write and work in the media and all of that. So. Um, you know, then I started this PR agency and it's been 17 years since I, that wow. was 17 years ago. Um, and it's always been like, um, a word of mouth through clients. Um, you know, in the beginning I kind of was a little bit all over the place. I did fashion, I did yoga mats, I did books, I did beauty. But then as time went on, I kind of honed it into focusing more on beauty just because that was my background and that was my niche. And as the world gets crazier and faster and there's more brands and more products and more media, I'm like, I really need to find my niche. So I kind of um, decided that, you know, beauty was my thing. And, and ever since then, I was just focusing on beauty brands. So lots of, you know, working with a lot of smaller startups, female founded uh, indie beauty brands, um, because I just felt like I just resonated with that. Um, a uh, type of, you know, entrepreneurial um, mindset. And I empathized with what they were going through because I had been there myself. Um, and so yeah, small business struggling to get out. And, and the further along we go, the harder it is for a small business to get out there and get noticed because most small businesses don't have a lot of income, at disposable income. And so everybody wants a fee for this, that, and the other. And the fee isn't a small fee. It's a huge fee. So uh, that's great that you're championing, championing the small businesses. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of, you know, and I was passionate about it. And I, um, and as time went on, I would say probably closer to 
2017-18, um, I definitely saw a change in the beauty market as opposed, you know, things were really uh, taught, people started talking about ingredient formulation and sustainability and clean formulas and what does that mean and, and this is toxic and this is not good for you and, you know, so that was like the first time I really started like realizing that, you know, what we put on our skin uh, really has an effect to, you know, our health too, and what it does to the inside and also what it does to your skin. Um, so I started going down that path and obviously, you know, just as um, times change, you know, my clients changed um, and I really was starting to really champion products that were, um, you know, making a difference um, on people's, in, in their health and, and all of that. And I, even worked on a uh, campaign for a documentary at what point called Toxic Beauty, which was all about, um, it was a documentary that they did about Johnson and Johnson and the talc mm. and the cancer that um, a lot of women unfortunately um, was diagnosed with from using and they were able to kind of trace it back to the baby powder that they were using um, even as a child, as an adult. And so, that was just fascinating to me also just to be able to see how beauty products are really making a difference not just uh, again you know um you know on your skin but they're affecting people's lives and health and and everything and so um i started thinking more about products and where they come from and what those ingredients were i also had another client that i'd worked with for uh, many years on and off and um it was it it's a shea butter brand and she, uh, her name is Rahama and she has a brand called Shailene. And so I've always been a huge champion of a supporter of her and what she's done. And I was always just so in awe, you know, sometimes you just meet people and you're like, how do they do that? Or where did that, I don't, I'm so beyond me like, with that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, how did, what, oh my like, I want, I want to be part of this. This is amazing. And so she, um had gone to the she was a peace corps volunteer she was a, she her parents were from uh ghana but she grew up in upstate new york and she went to the uh, peace corps and um worked in mali and ghana and she realized the inequity of like what was going on with shea butter production because that is a specific um ingredient that is only you know comes from the shea trees that are only grown in certain parts of the sahel region in africa in Ghana and certain parts in Africa. And she saw, you know, this was women's work. Women um, producers were making a livelihood, really just, you know, um, harvesting this nut and creating it into a butter. They use it for all kinds of things there. Um, and then, you know, they would get paid a certain wage to be able to ship it out. And then and, and American companies use it for, you know, products that you buy every day and you don't even know. Um, and so she saw these big corporations coming in and really like taking advantage and taking away all of this work for these women. And that was really like beyond her. So she created a cooperative that they were, were able to like source the ingredient, you know, make this product. She was able to pay them a, li a living wage, like five times the living wage that they do in Ghana and promote it out in the United States, put it in a product here. And then also, you know, offer this shade to other brands that want like ethically sourced, you know, fair trade uh, shade. And so I worked with her. And so, you know, everything I always did with her, I was just, you know, I was really proud of. Um, and so it just started making me think about other ingredients and other products like, you know, argon oil that comes from Morocco. And, um, you know, there's so many uh, botanical ingredients in our products um, that are sourced from all over the world, mostly a lot of developing regions, too. And then you start to think about, like, how did this end up in my bottle or, you know. Right. And, and did the person actually get paid a fair wage for this company that's using this product? That's I think that's where a lot of people don't realize it's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm picking up this product here and, and I'm putting it on my skin or whatever. And, oh, it's got some shea in it, oh, whatever. But they're they're not thinking beyond, which is kind of part of what we're doing with this, this network is to educate more people about fair trade and have them make more ethical choices in the products that they choose. Like I, it, I, I always tell people to start with chocolate, but you carry a lot of different um, body care products, some of which I 
use and love because I'm working on, okay, the only thing I'm putting on my body is going to be fair trade that I know whatever women are making this are actually getting paid a fair wage and they're not being forced into labor and they're not being trafficked and they're not being, um, mm -hmm. they're making an actual honest living wage. And, that, and it's taking the time to think about that in the products you buy versus going and oh, I'm used to this. I'm just going to grab it off the shelf. Yeah. And it is, uh, it is, there's so much education needed for that to, to, to kind of get to that mindset with everything that we spend our money on really. I mean, um, obviously chocolate bananas, like people obviously think about food and that is for a good reason because most of it, you know, fair trade is all about, agriculture and farmers. And so it's come a long way. Um, but I also think, you know, with the fashion revolution happening, uh, actually this, we're in fashion revolution week right now, which is celebrating, you know, the fall of the Rana Plaza in Bangladesh 13 years ago um, and all of those, you know, that horrible tragedy. And that since has spurred this whole like movement uh, for fashion and making sure people start to understand what fast fashion is and slow fashion and, you know, where they should spend their money and not. And, uh, you know, the whole yeah. movement of, you know. For the, for the listeners that don't know about Fashion Revolution Week and the, the Rana Plaza, share a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, it was 13 years ago, I believe, and then there was a factory in Bangladesh, and it was um, not up to code. There was cracks. I know people, the workers had complained for a long time that the, the building was not secure. However, you know, thousands of people would uh, fill that building every day, all day, all hours of the day and night, um, of all ages, unfortunately. Um, and work really crazy long hours for very, very little money uh, to manufacture fast fashion. And um, what happened was the building actually collapsed uh, because of the lack of, um, you know, just foresight. People just did, people that, you know, they didn't care. They didn't want to fix the building. And so I think there was over 1,300 people that died in that accident. I think I lost you or... Your mute is on. <laughs> Just decides. Okay. Can yeah, you no. So, um, so I had posted a, a thing right out of Wikipedia. It was uh, April 24th, 2013. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing was, okay, they knew the building was, was a problem and the people yeah. on the bottom floor didn't come to work and they made all the people working in the, the fashion industry. They told them if they weren't going, going to work, that they would lose their paychecks. And so they forced them to go to work. Somebody had built three floors above the, the original building and, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't properly authorized or whatever. And mm -hmm. so all those people were forced to go in there, even though they knew that there were cracks in the building and the problems. And, uh, death toll was 1134 with 2500 people injured it was considered mm -hmm. the deadliest accidental structure failure in modern human history uh the deadliest garment factory factory disaster in history and the de deadliest industrial accident in the history of bangladesh um it contained clothing factories bank apartments several shops the shops the bank on the lower floors were immediately closed after cracks were discovered in the building the building's owners ignored warnings to avoid using the building after cracks had appeared the day before. Garment workers were ordered to return the following day and the building collapsed. And, and the fact that they were threatened that if you don't come back, you're, we're, mm -hmm. you're going to lose your pay. So that it's like, what, did, what could they do? So they went in there and they basically sent them to their deaths. Mm -hmm. it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. But I mean, uh, you know what has come out of that uh there's a lot more a brand there's a lot more awareness now in the world uh you know unfortunately it has to take a tragedy like that for people to wake up um but uh you know now um you know and i still we still have a huge long way to go because people are still yeah. you know people love to shop it's hard to not you know it, right. everything is so accessible we live in this country where like we can go to um you know t 
Target and do our grocery shopping and our clothing shopping <laughs> and our furniture shopping all in one fell swoop. Who doesn't love that? You know, but you got to be mindful. Um, but, you know, I have seen fair trade labels on some of the clothing there now, which is awesome. Um, yeah. Thread, which is one of their brands, their jeans, and it's fair trade certified. So I was super, super excited to see that. So um, there's a there's a brand of sheets that that I I buy called Bowl and Branch. And yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're cotton's fair trade certified, and they're they're a little more expensive than other sheets. But it's mm -hmm. like somebody's like, why do you buy those? I'm like, because it's fair trade. Yeah, and I. I, I came into fair trade, not really knowing what fair trade was and mm -hmm. didn't know about the whole chocolate industry and didn't really right. know anything. I thought I'm going to buy some beads and help some women. And right. I had to yeah. learn a lot about fair trade. And I'm always encouraging people to make a decision to buy something fair trade. You can't possibly re no. replace everything today, fair trade, no. but you can make a conscious effort. Okay. I, I use sugar. I'm going to use something that's a fair trade. I buy chocolate. I'm going to use something that's fair trade. I buy skincare products. I'm going to use something that's fair trade. Speaking of skincare products, share how you got into doing uh, beautyology and how you yeah. started yeah. to collaborate with all the, the artisans. And I'm, I, I love the products that you have. I, I buy you. things. Yeah. Well, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, I got into this and I honestly, I didn't really know what fair trade was either. And But you start to realize like what you, what your beliefs are and where you feel strongly about certain things. And you realize that fair trade encompasses that. Um, and for me, it was, you know, the beauty industry because that's where I spent my professional career working in the, you know, with products. And so um, really this is, so how did I get involved in, in beautyology? I um, had had an idea to do something different, you know, obviously was becoming more interested in ingredients and formulation. And then um, right, bef right, I guess you could say I was having a moment in my life where I was really like at a crossroads where do I want to keep doing beauty PR? Do I want to do something different? And I um, had always wanted to uh, travel to India. <laughs> I love traveling and um, I've been lucky to go, you know, to many places over the years, but I always wanted to go to India. And so I finally planned my trip and I went in March of uh, 2020. <laughs> so you know where this is going. <laughs> I ended up going on this trip and um, it was fabulous. However, it was cut short because the country was shutting down because there was a pandemic happening. Um, we knew that obviously this was starting, but it wasn't, it really obviously escalated and mushroomed once I was um, in India. Obviously I wouldn't have gone to India. Um, so um, but anyways, I think my, um, you know, just where I was in my life and what I was thinking about and then being in this uh, country that I wanted so much to see and experience and then being exposed to uh, the people and what, you know, just seeing firsthand how Western consumerism has really affected them, especially, you know, this, the the poverty stricken areas, which there's such a dichotomy, there's such a striking you know, people say it all the time. There's so much poverty and there's so much wealth. And just the, the uh, it was just it was um, really, you know, it really did a number on me, I guess. And when I um, and I was able to experience and go into cooperatives and see how some of these um, uh, villages work together and lived and, you know, worked in making, uh, you know, clothing and jewelry and all kinds of things. It was just um, it was really eye opening. So when I came home, I kind of just started writing and journaling. And then I created a blog called Beautyology. And I just started writing about different things because I've always written about, you know, for years. And um, I don't know, by the time like the holidays came around, I had done this gifts guide and a lot of the products that I just unknowingly put in there were fair trade items. And I really, I, I had a blast doing it and I got a lot of great feedback. And then, um, I don't know, one thing led to another and I decided, I think I should make a marketplace. <laughs> Again, not having the business background, <laughs> 
all these years oh, later, but I have, I have the, you know, I have all the other amazing skills, right? I have the PR and the marketing and the eye and the beauty experience and all the wonderful, you know, all that stuff. So, and the connections, but again, like, so I'm like, I'm just, you know, this just sounds like a fun pandemic project. So <laughs> I was still doing PR on the side, but I'm like, this is something, you know, how many people have you talked to that is like, well, I created this, the pandemic. So yeah. So I started this uh, marketplace and I just started like, first, of course, I went to my girlfriend, Ahama, and I go, what do you think of this idea? We need to create, you know, there's no marketplace out there for really for products that are fair trade, beauty products. And there's not, it's hard to say, there's not a lot of products that you can make fair trade that are beauty 100%, right? Because beauty products have lots of ingredients in them. And for them to be certified, you know, every single ingredient either needs to be certified itself or it has to be manufactured in a fair trade certified uh, factory, right? And so those are bigger brands, of course, because if they have their own factory, you know, that's a whole other, you know, other thing. But, um, and then I just started finding brands online, actually, and just doing a deep dive on social media and just the brands that I, that were talking about fair trade and were just, I was just felt like I could align with and I started reaching out to them, just pitching my idea, introducing myself. Would you be interested? What do you think of this idea? And I uh, have to say that like I had an overwhelming response. Every brand that I had, I'd reached out to from all over the world, they thought it was a great idea. No one has done anything like this, you know, specifically with fair trade. And so it just encouraged me to keep going. So really, that's how it started. I worked, you know, some of the brands that I reached out to from the very beginning, um, really connected me to people um, from almost every continent around the world. And here we were in the pandemic. We weren't allowed to leave our houses. We weren't about to meet anyone or talk to anybody. But yet I was having Zoom conversations with strangers that I can now say are, you know, like, you know, friends that um, were from all over the world. So I was meeting women from Guatemala, uh, Peru, South Africa, um, Singapore, India, um, you know, it was uh, for me, who's somebody who just loves travel and who loves different cultures and then learning about, you know, um, different places around the world. I was having the best time in my office by myself <laughs> during the pandemic because I felt like I could, you know, travel all over these places. You know, I'd be there, be zooming. I'd be looking behind their shoulder, going, "Oh my God, look at that volcano! That's awesome!" You know, so it was. Uh, that's how it really started, and I. Um, worked with a developer and a designer and we helped build the site. And, um, you know, I created this whole, you know, infrastructure that I feel like I'm still working, I'm still tooling with to this very moment. It's still like, it's, it's almost weird. weird. And I feel like I don't know, you know, no, I'm not going to say I don't know what I'm doing, but um, uh, I learned so much from this whole experience, not just about, you know, um, how to build a you know online commerce marketplace, but also about fair trade and also about ingredient formulation and products and how they really affect different parts of the world. And so, um, really proud of what I've built. I work with you know right now. I think I have about forty five brands on the site, um, and I can't say that they're all fair trade certified because they're not. Again, because you know that's a, not an easy. Right. Yeah. thing to do but um some of the brands are actually fair trade certified from the countries from where they are coming from so for instance i have an awesome brand called tiara and lava and the woman lucy uh who created this is a formulator and lives in antigua so she uh actually has her whole brand is uh, fair trade certified from her country she works with uh you know different uh producers uh, in the region of Antigua, uh, where they produce Mayan, you know, specific ingredients uh, that are found, obviously, within the lush world of Antigua, where the, they have the, you know, the rich soil from the volcanoes. And um, so she formulates products with ingredients like black salt and kapal and ingredients you've never heard of before, but they're fascinating and they're beautiful and ingredients and they're very powerful and they do amazing, um, you know, things for your body and your skin. And so, um, you know, that's one brand that I am really proud to be able to work with. Um, you know, there's the Dominican Republic, you know, there's brands that I work with that have, you know, that work with, um, they plant Moringa trees um, to help the deforestation of the country. Um, and it, it, they're, they're very drought 
uh, like they're tolerant to, you know, drought stricken types of plants. And so there's so much um, that these moringa trees can do for uh, the island and gives uh, the people their work to help plant them. And then they also help them um, harvest the leaves and they do, a, the, you know, press the oil and they make this beautiful product. And so, um, you know, that contributes to, you know, sustaining the the island of the Dominican Republic. And so that is another brand that I'm really proud to to offer. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah. So yeah. there's really, there's stories, you know, with all the brands. Yeah, they, cool. And it's all made, you know, it's like a lot of it, it's family businesses or groups that come together. It's not a big factory over here that you don't know where yeah. the, the products came from. They're actually going out harvesting some of the ingredients to, to make these things. And uh, I notice a difference because I have some favorite products that I have for me. I didn't bring, I should have had my. Oh, I know. I was like, oh, should I have some stuff? Yeah, you love. So Yara Shea, right? You were, we were so uh, lucky to have Naguzo come when we went to, there was a conference in uh, Long Beach last month for Fair Trade Federation that Eldon and I were both part of and uh, Naguzo came. And she is um, a woman that created a shea butter brand that I carry on my site called Yar Shea. She has to, um, she's she lives in the Bronx, I believe, in New York, but she's from Kenya. Um, excuse me, I, you're no, she's from Nigeria. I take that back. Yeah, yeah. Um, she does a beautiful line that she sources the shea from Ghana, and then all the proceeds for her brand goes to her nonprofit. So she does this. Yeah, like this, is, uh, this is my yeah. favorite. This is the the lavender. I use mm -hmm. the body wash and the the. Um, so you can find her on Instagram, Yara Shea Beauty. It's 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 amazing. It smells mm -hmm. great. It feels good on your body. One thing I'll notice I notice about the the fair trade skin care products that I use. A lot of products that you get kind of over the counter or whatever really dry my skin out. But the things mm -hmm. that I get that are fair trade, that are actually say they moisturize, actually do moisturize okay. your skin and leave it feeling good. And you, the, the smell, the aroma is great. This one's lavender. I love the lavender mm -hmm. scent, but it's, it, it does actually make a difference in the way your skin feels. I noticed that mm -hmm. significantly, even with soaps, I, there's a local vendor, as you know, I'm part of fair trade Long Beach and, mm -hmm. and uh, you're, your next, you have things next door to Marte. Marte, mm -hmm. yeah, and it, it, that's in in Long Beach on Bellflower and Carson. Mm -hmm. So you can stop by and and get some products there. But mm -hmm. there's a there's a vendor that does her own soap, and I use those mm -hmm. soaps too. And the same thing because it's mm -hmm. it's made by somebody's hands, and they put specific ingredients in. It feels mm -hmm. different on your skin. You can tell the difference. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, there's so much that goes into beauty products that we don't even know. It's just not regulated in this country. Like it is in Europe. Um, you know, and things are starting to change, which is exciting. Um, but you know, I think there's like what 13 or 1400 ingredients that are banned in the, in the UK. You, they can't, you, you can't even make a product with those product, you know, those ingredients, but here you can really, um, it's like the wild west. You, you can just <laughs> put whatever you want in and say it's, you know, natural. We don't know. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. That's just a selling point. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that I was uh, speaking at an event. I, I speak on negotiation and one of the strategies I talk about is verify the facts. You have mm -hmm. to verify if somebody says like, okay, so, so there's things that say there's something that makes you think that, oh, that's, that must be a healthy food. And then when you go, it's like, okay, the name is says skinny or something or low fat or low this or whatever, or, or healthy. And you go look and it's like, wow, look at all this stuff in here. And then you see some article that, that lists whatever thing is the, the worst possible of all that kind of product that you could possibly consume. So right. you have to go and really, do a little work and verify and it's about taking care of yourself. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of greenwashing that goes on in um, 
the beauty industry for sure. You don't know. You could say anything, you know, and you, like you said, you have to really take the time and energy to to educate yourself and do the due diligence to figure out what it is you're buying, you know. But that's where the certifications like fair trade come into play, even though sometimes it, you know, they can be tedious and time consuming and expensive, especially for small businesses starting out to make sure that they have the proper certification, which but it does represent so much at the end of the day. And so, um, you know, all of these uh, seals, the B Corporation seal, which has become almost a gold standard now, if you want to start right. a beauty business, which is, you know, very cumbersome and time consuming and expensive and all of the things. But again, at the end of the day, like you have these seals and there's a reason for it. You know, it's representing the products that really make a difference um, to people, the planet, your skin, all of that stuff. So, you know, it's, 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 um, you know, important as consumers to pay attention to all of those things really. So, and as a, you know, business, uh, you know, entrepreneur to put out the best products possible for, you know, everybody. So it's more about, you know, unfortunately that's not always the case. You know, people are out there for, you know, making money before right. other things sometimes, but I think that's what, you know, comes brings us together. <laughs> Yeah, profits before people. That's that we we want to mm -hmm. put people before profits. So, absolutely. Um, so it, as we're coming to to a close, first of all, where can people find you if they want to check out the products? So you can find me online. Uh, so my website is beautyology.com. That's b e a u t y l o O L, excuse me, I can't spell. It's the end of the day. Beauty o l o g i e dot com. Yeah. Um, there we go. That's it. Yes. So that's my website. Um, so all of the products uh, from all of the brands are on my site. Um, I, like you mentioned, I do have um, in-person shop in Long Beach at a store called Amarte, uh, which is a Latin inspired um, lifestyle fashion uh, boutique fair trade. It's beautiful. Clarabelle is the founder and she's done a, just an impeccable job um, curating her collection of goods. So I have a space there with uh, beauty products specific to South American, Latin American countries. Um, so you can find oils from Brazil, Peru, Guatemala, uh, Mexico. Um, so you can find some of my products there. Um, I'm excited to say though, that I'm going to be carrying Yara Beauty, Yara Shea Beauty at uh, Long Fair Trade Long Beach starting probably next week. So I'm just waiting for my new order from Naguzo. So um, okay. yeah, I talked to Teresa. And so I'm going to be coming down hopefully by the end of next week and um, setting up some of the products there. So you can make sure that you always have your lavender. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. I, 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 uh, yeah, I, and I, I as have as a partner in Fair Trade Long Beach, I like to shop mm -hmm. from the other other mm -hmm. partners there and, when I can, and I, I get a lot of gifts for people from there. Oh, and, every time I go there, I buy. It's so dangerous, but it's <laughs> it's great. Right. Forty one hundred five North Bellflower Unit B yes. and Marte is right next door, so you yeah, can have yourself a Fair Trade day. It's so. Fun. Um, and then I have another store in closer because I'm based in the valley. I'm in Woodland Hills. And so there's a place called the Salt Cave, the Valley Salt Cave, which is have you ever been to a salt cave? Do you know I what have. those are? OK, yeah. so this is the only one in the valley, um, really, and like all of it's huge and it's beautiful. And they have a huge waterfall in there. You go, you get back in those chairs and then they they do sound baths and all kinds of events. And so it's just a gorgeous space. And so the, the owners there are just beyond. They're so nice. Um, it's a couple from South Africa and I um, am able to sell, I, I have an, a whole, like a whole wall actually of all of the products that um, I offer in person. And so you can also go, if you happen to be in LA, you have to be in Woodland Hills or in the Valley, you can definitely shop there. Um, we're doing a special now too for Mother's Day, where we I paired up with a couple other people from the Fair Trade uh, Los Angeles, and we created a Mother's Day box, so you can actually get them there. And if you buy one, you get a free Salt Cave session, which is nice. pretty cool. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I I, uh, I guess Mother's Day is coming up, so these make great Mother's Day gifts. I think I've given my daughter some of the products. I gave actually gave both my kids. You had that really cool um, deodorant. 
that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh that yes, it's since you are in lava. Yeah, it's a clean deodorant, so there's no aluminum. Yeah. But did she do the armpit detox? I, I don't know. She, I actually gave it to both of my kids as a stock okay. stuffer, and, and yeah, and then my my son's girlfriend. So that's that's one of the. I I always shop and I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this. And, and I thought, oh, this would be great because that's something that goes right into our, our skin, right at a very important area that. It I've, really is. I mean, yeah. if you're going to do something, it doesn't even have to be fair trade, but something that's clean, you know, talking about, you know, if you're going to swap something for something that's better for you, it should be your deodorant. Yeah, 100%. definitely. Yeah, we have so many lymph nodes in our armpits that absorb and that's where it goes straight to our breasts. And, you know, I'm not a doctor and then it's, you know, but it's just you, it's just so evident. So it's really important to make sure you stay away from aluminum in your deodorant. So awesome. Any yeah. parting thoughts before we uh, conclude? <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm excited to been able to chat with you and be here and, uh, tell your audience about my journey and, you know, my obviously passion for fair trade beauty. And I'm excited to see, you know, how things progress. My business is, you know, young, but it's, um, you know, growing and it just takes, you know, a village to kind of get the word out and, and spread all of this, you know, education, but, um, you know, I'm excited to see what comes and, and again, if anyone listening ever has questions about products or ingredients, um, I'm very, um, I'm online way too much. So you can always email me. You can find my email on the website or you could um, take it, which is info at beautyology.com. Awesome. Well, uh, I, I'm so excited to have had you here. And for anybody, go check out beautyology.com and or if you're in the Long Beach area, stop by, stop by Fair Trade of Long Beach and Amarte and pick up something there. Or if you're in the valley, you can stop by over there as well. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. you can find her on social media as well. I'm following on Instagram. And so connect with Robin and get some really wonderful, amazing fair trade pr products. So before I sign off, I want to remind everybody that I am still raising funds for my the trip to Kenya, givesengo.com slash Mission Kenya. $20. If I get 1,000 people to donate $20, I reach the goal or 200 people to donate $100. And it's less than that now because we have donations coming in. My back has been out for about two weeks and I haven't reached out to people like I said I was going to, but... Trust me, everybody, I'm going to start reaching out to you and asking for donations. <laughs> Next year, I'm praying that I have, uh, have don't have to do as much crowdfunding that I have. I'm reaching out and connecting with organizations to sponsor some of these things, going after grants, but that takes time. I'm only one person, and uh, this is the way I have to do it this year. So I would appreciate your support. You can go to givesengo.com slash Mission Kenya and see all the things we're raising funds for. We're raising funds to do a mobile medical clinic. We're going to sponsor school fees and school supplies for kids, food packs for needy families, and and do some things to expand our farming operations so the, the people up there at Mount Elgon can have, we want to employ more women. We have about 15 women right now. We want to add more women. We have an opportunity to purchase three acres and actually Layla's probably on her way or will be on her way. It's nighttime over there or it's early morning over there now. But she will be on her way very soon, and I'm looking forward to getting photos and sharing those with you. So check it out, givesengo.com slash Mission Kenya. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. You can message me on Facebook, Instagram, Eldana at basketsandbeadskenya.com. Would love for you to be part of this mission in Kenya. And so, Robin, thanks so much again for coming on and stopping by. Love oh, to, it's been a to pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So everybody, until next week, I will see you soon. Nakupenda. Bye. <laughs>